Brace yourselves for more jank in the tank. Another two janky decks hit the table. These are really crazy, insane decks that are made by complete madmen, and I hope you will thoroughly enjoy it. I'm playing noise, not just any old noise. You see the magnum opus in my hand, you know something's up. Of course, my goal is still to mill the corp out, and he's playing Jinteki PE, so... Uh, nasty. But the good thing is, he started with a medical research fundraiser, which really... Uh, makes it much easier to install that first magnum opus. Then I do snatch a house of knives from him, thank goodness, and I draw up. And I see the single grimoire in my deck, thank goodness. This was a deck that I constructed a couple weeks back, intended to bring it for a test run at my local game store because I only have one four set. That's why I haven't been on the noise bandwagon, if you haven't noticed. I haven't been playing noise at all. That's because with only one Grimoire, you can only make a deck that's so effective. Alright, so uh, I managed to steal the House of Knives. He manages to get one of his own as well. Unfortunate for me. And he draws up with Jackson. I look at his cards and then I look at the bottom right corner. What do I notice? 59 cards. Immediately when I saw that, I told him, ah... That kind of deck, yep. I haven't actually played against this uh, Tic Tacky, uh, my nickname for it, but I do know exactly what he packs in store for me. For those of you who are unaware, when you see a Jinteki P that is running more than 49 cards, what typically their strategy revolves around a single card, and that is called Philotic Entanglement. Their job is to pack every single one-point agenda in the game, make a very thick deck and then let you score as many one-point agendas as you want because when you score too many of them, they will just biotic labor out a philotic entanglement from their hand and win the game outright. As noise, I do not have players actually to protect against that. So um, that is a genuine concern for me. So my first priority right now is to just keep hitting, keep hitting R&D. This is because from R&D, I'm safe from the threat of GQ which only accelerates my death to Philotic Entanglement. Alright, on my side, you should notice what I'm playing as well. That's right, it's a, comp it's a noise deck that is full of programs. I'm playing Oro Blind Oracle May and 41 other programs. 3 Oracle Mays, 41 programs and 1 copy of Grimoire. The 1 copy of Grimoire won't be seen every game. It's a luxury if I get it. If I don't get it, I can still live without it because there's always Jin to help me out with memory issues. So as you can see, I'm aiming to hit R&D every turn. And being left at 3 cards, I decide to run Jackson. I need to stop him from power drawing with Jackson. This is because uh, between Biotic Labor and Fast Track, there are many ways for Jinteki P to pull off a Philotic score from hand or even score from deck entirely possible and i don't want that to happen until i hit the philotic entanglement i'm not safe so my entire goal this game is to find that one copy of philotic entanglement the needle in the haystack then i'm home free otherwise my secondary goal is to mill his biotic labels and fast tracks into archives so that if i can't get it neither can he so we'll see how successful I am at doing that. Alright, he installs a remote. Not sure if I should contest it. I decide to drop with Oracle May first. Turns out it's a Lamprey. Uh, Lamprey is pretty good to run against a uh, HQ uh, Corp without any HQ protection. Unfortunately, hitting HQ is not the wisest move here because firstly, he's really pretty rich. Lamprey won't make a dent in his economy, and more importantly, I am at risk of GQs, and especially snares as well, because like in all likelihood, he's, pe he's packing quite a few snares, and um, if he power drew them with Jackson Howard, he will most likely keep them in hand. So, HQ is a very dangerous place. Unfortunately, I read him wrongly, he does score another House of Knives. My goodness, such a thick deck, he manages to see all three House of Knives that early on. Very, very bad news for me. That is the worst agenda I can afford to let him score, and he got two of them off. And the first one still has one remaining counter on it. 
So from now on, I need to make every single run with at least 5 cards in hand. Otherwise, I could die to double House of Knives plus Snare. Really unfortunate that I actually let uh, slip up there, let him get 2 House of Knives. I thought the probability of him uh, getting 2 House of Knives is really slim, but well, he got it and I'm paying for it right now. Okay, another important thing to keep track of is the number of agendas I have, simply because of the periodic track threat. Three agendas means that a uh, score from hand would be worth four points. I mean, four net damage. One more net damage than the number of agendas I have. So this means that I always need to keep at least four cards in my hand at the end of every turn. That is something to keep in mind. So I think this is the point where I stop st scoring agendas and instead go for the other win condition, milling with noise. This is an option available to noise and is a reason why noise is such a strong archetype today. The ability to uh, win via another route, namely uh, virus milling. And it's very easy to do. I already have two viruses over here. Actually, all I need to do right now is to install the gin tutor up a virus every single turn and just keep installing it. There's nothing he can do to me. This is amazing. But I completely ignore that line of play. Instead, I prepare the knight to assault his R&D. Locking down R&D is still one of the most reliable ways to win, but um, it is a pretty questionable move when he has two house of knives. On the bright side, because it's R&D, he can't really tell for sure that I'm going to access a snare or a fetal AI so he doesn't know for sure when is the right time to fire off both halves sometimes. Remember he only gets one shot at dealing two net damage to me during a single run. He has to make it count. So I think for now I should be ignoring his remotes. Instead I should go for the virus mill and or relentless R&D attack. I draw into a cache which I don't really need anymore because I'm pretty loaded with Credits. Once again, I trash the Howard. It is very important to trash Howards because they interfere with my milling strategy. And more importantly, they allow him to draw up all his combo pieces needed to fast track Biotic Labor, a Philotic from hand. The last thing I want. Alright. So he does use up the Jackson while I contemplate my next move. Uh, by now, Rook is entirely useless. He's up on 17 credits. I draw another card. Turns out it's another cash. So I play it just to mill virus, uh, to perform virus milling. Yes, virus milling is definitely the way to go here. I mean, he's nowhere near the point of winning. All I need to do is just install enough viruses and when I feel comfortable enough, make that big run on R&D and just win the game outright. Alternatively, hitting R&D multiple times works. But if his deck really is full of one point agendas, there will come a point in time where I have four, uh, five or more agendas in my score area, which is an instant death against Philotic at the moment. So right now, I really need to either find that Philotic or completely prevent him from uh, fast advancing a Philotic. What better way to do that than the card I just drew, the Imp. Imp allows me to trash Biotic labels for free. This is crucial. I immediately take a run on HQ, knowing that he probably has a biotic labor in him. Alright, and as expected, he zaps me for 2 net damage, but I'm really committed to the run. Um, I just hope that I don't hit the snare. I can only hope. Alright, I make the run, and I see the encrypted portals. I take one net damage, and at this point, with four agenda scored and two cards in hand with one click left, I knew that there was no hope. I could only hope that he doesn't have the Philotic fast advance in hand and draw up, but he did, and he closed out the game. That was very unfortunate. I definitely should have won the game because I was playing very carefully, but that one mistake cost me the entire game. I still am pretty unfamiliar with playing against all in Philotic to take it PE. As I said, the right move would have been to install the gene, tutor up 3000 viruses, mill his entire deck down, and make one run of our, uh, archives. That would have been the really smart thing to do. Yep, 
was my oversight and I paid for it the hard way. In retrospect, I think it should have been, I should have expected that he would have the resources to pull off the philotic and I should have just went all in on the last run. The last flick, I should have just ran HQ once more. Um, if I hit the philotic, I probably would have won the game. If I hit the biotic, at least I would delay my death, my impending doom, just a bit more. Neither of that happened, and yeah, I paid the price. Uh, all in, philotic entanglement in P is a very weak archetype, simply because um, noise is a thing now, and also importantly, uh, you are very, very, it's very, very swingy because you only have one copy of philotic in your deck. And it's also weak to Deus Ex, which most shaper packs, shapers pack nowadays. So that's why you don't see this deck very often. But still, when you encounter it, when you see someone's deck so thick, thick tacky, as I say, better know how to play against it. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something, and see you around.